Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Again, my name is Jory Hadsel. I'm Distance Ed and Online Learning Coordinator here at Sacramento City College. Um, once you've finished reviewing this workshop, we do have some documentation that's available for you um, as faculty at this URL on the screen. It's saccity-online.org slash de slash faculty resources. And uh, again, I'll bring this slide up again at the end if you want to copy that URL down. And then also there's information available for your students. Uh, it's pretty similar to the documentation for you, but it's on our new student help uh, website that's shared among all four Los Rios colleges. And uh, students can access that at this URL directly or by clicking on the D2L help link that they'll see at the top of their course navigation bar. So just wanted to make you aware of that. And then as we move forward as well, we have a few um, learning outcomes we'll talk about real quickly. And so by the end of this workshop, um, you should be able to explain the benefits and uh, uses of the notifications tool, understand how this can um, be effectively used with students, and then you'll be able to perform all the basic functions required to set up notifications, such as uh, registering a mobile number, routing your email notifications, describing or defining how often to receive those updates, um, choosing what kinds of instant notifications you want, and we'll talk about that in a moment, and then also deciding which courses you or your students may want to exclude from receiving notifications. So we have a lot to cover, and let's go ahead and get started in just uh, one moment here. I'm going to share my desktop with you so we can take a look at this together. Okay, so here we are inside of a D2L course, and this is just a um, basic course we use for training purposes, so don't worry, we're not going to start spamming people or anything like that. Um, I'm enrolled here as a teacher, and I'll show you the student view in just a moment. The first thing you'll notice, actually, when you come in is, uh, and your, your page may be set up a little bit differently, but if you look here in the news area, um, and I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better on your screen. There are some new icons here along the top of the news widget. So of course you have the ability to add a news item, uh, reorder them, and change um, some display options. One thing is there's an RSS feed capability built in here now, and this allows you or your students to subscribe to D2L news updates um, in your favorite news reader, which may be you know, um, iGoogle, it might be something that's built into your web browser, or you may have an application on your computer or on a mobile device that allows you to automatically receive updates. So this is one way in which your students can, actually you or your students can uh, receive updates from courses in D2L outside of D2L. So a lot of, actually all of what we're talking about today is really geared at helping you communicate with your students without them having to log into D2L to see if there's been any kind of an update. So that's um, where we're headed here. The next icon over is the actual notifications icon and I'll go ahead and click on that here in just a moment and show you uh, what's required to set up a notification and how it works. It's, it's really um, pretty amazing and you know, these reminders are really valuable for your students so that it's a way of keeping them engaged and making sure they don't lose track of class activity again when they're not logged into the system. So what your students would do is they would come in and they would click on this um, notifications icon and that's where they'll configure their, their notifications. I want to show you one other thing real quickly while I'm in the instructor view and then we'll move through the process of actually setting up these notifications and I'll even uh, show you what those notifications look. I have my iPhone all ready to go here with a little camera and we can actually see what those look like when they come out. So that's quite exciting. But as the instructor, there are a couple of ways you can actually trigger an update for your students. One is through news. The other are through discussions and Dropbox and we'll move to those in, in a few minutes. But in news, if you create a new item, which I'll do, just click on the plus here to create a new news item. You know, you can type in your headline, um, you can type in your, your content, um, you know, all that good stuff. When you send an, a brand new news item or when you save it and publish it, 
it will actually um, send a text or email to your students automatically. So you don't have anything to worry about with that. Um, and I'll show you again how to do that in just a moment. The other nice feature that they've built in for faculty is if you come in and you need to update a news item, so let's say I've already written this welcome to week six item and I'm going to go in and I'm um, going to actually edit it. Right? I can come back in and say, you know, what I meant to tell you was dot dot dot. Right? There's this new box down here at the bottom and it's called major edit. I hope you can see that on your screen. And the major edit really allows you to decide, you know, I've made a significant enough change to this announcement that I want to go ahead and blast it back out to my students. So just by um, checking that box, clicking update now instead of save up here in the corner, that will actually trigger the notifications to go out to your students. So, you know, we've all had those moments where we maybe we posted the wrong URL to something, you know, broken link, or you, you needed to change a date or clarify something. That's a way to actually go ahead and push that information back out to your students. You wouldn't want to do that all the time and send duplicate notifications to your students, but it's a nice feature to have. So I just wanted to point that out to you. We'll come back to this instructor view in just a moment. But first, let me go over to the student view. So here I am in a student persona, and I'm going to go into that same exact course where we went, where we just were. And again, let me make that a little bit bigger for you. So here you can see, oh, there's that new item that we had just um, posted. You know what I meant to tell you was, and there's a little greeting in here for people who are attending this workshop today. Welcome to the notification workshop attendees. And I talked just a little bit in here about the major edit. So now I'm in as a student, and what I want to do is I want to be able to um, go in here and actually um, set up the notification. So as a student, I would just click on this little gear icon up here at the top. That's the notifications icon. And I'm just going to actually delete that. Um, I set this up yesterday, so I'm going to reconfigure it here for you. So this is the notification screen, and it just asks you to control how, you know, you can control how your notifications are received and, and, and whatnot. The first option here at the top has to do with contact methods. And you'll notice, again, that students can get notifications either by, on their um, mobile phone or by email. So in here, it has already um, defined my email address based on my D2L email for your students. Um, this would be their W account number, so it would be their WID at email.losrios.edu. Now they can change where those notifications go to. You have to remember when your students do this, it does not change where their D2L email will go to. This only affects the actual notifications that are sent out. So if they have a work email address that they check more frequently or something like that, it might be helpful for them. The next step is to actually register um, the mobile number. So it's really easy. Click on the link to register a mobile number. I have to fill in the fields on this little form that pop up. So here we are in the United States. Um, and I would point out this only works currently in the United States, UK, and Canada. So I know we do have distance ed students all over, but most are in the United States. And you do have to select a carrier from this list. Um, if you're not using a carrier on the list, my experience has been that uh, this won't work. And I was trying it yesterday with a Google um, Voice account to see if I could text myself that way. And because it wasn't affiliated with a particular carrier, or at least I didn't know which carrier maybe it's affiliated with, um, that wouldn't work. However, all the major carrier carriers are on here. I'm going to go ahead and choose my carrier, which happens to be AT&T. And then I'm going to put my number in, and that should be coming right back up. And I don't know if you heard the little sound coming from my phone, but I'll go ahead and show that to you here in just a moment. It has just texted me a confirmation code. And uh, what I'm going to do is actually switch to my other layout here. So that I can show you both the screen and my cell phone. Isn't technology cool these days? 
Now you have my screen back up there, and let me turn on the camera so we can see. Okay. So can you all see the? Uh, you can see the phone showing up here, and I, I think that Genia Tech thing is going to go off. That just has to do with this being our document camera. Um, There we go. So I apologize that this isn't a little, little more clear. Let me see if I can get a little bit closer. It appears I'm zoomed in just a little bit too much now. But I want you to be able to see the notifications as they come in here, because I think it's important that you're able to see what your students are going to receive when they uh, when they work with this. Let's focus it just a little bit here. Yeah, technology is always fun to work with. <laughs> okay. And of course I'm on an iPhone here. Um, you could be on an Android device or um, a number of other platforms that you'd be using. I apologize, this is absolutely deadly. <laughs> okay, so here you can see that it says um, from no reply D2L at Los Rios .edu, your notification confirmation code is 6012. So I'm actually going to type 6012 into this confirmation code box here. And then click on the confirm button. And now I get a message saying that my mobile number has been um, confirmed. And then I'll also um, move on to the next options here. You can set the maximum number of messages per day. So for me, I'm on an unlimited texting plan, so it doesn't matter to me if, you know, if I get 100 of these, although it might make um, my day a little crazy trying to answer them all or, or read them all. But your students may have a certain limit that they want to set. So that it's important to know that that is here for them if they want to set a texting limit. I'm going to stay on no limit here. And then again, to change their email address, it's just a matter of either using the system email or using a custom email, which could be you know, a Gmail account, Yahoo, or, or some other address that's out there. So that's, the, that's what's involved in actually registering the device to go ahead and be able to receive um, the numbers. And then the next option on this page is the summary of activity. So students actually re will receive a digest of activi activity for their course. Um, I've set this one here so that I get a daily summary. Uh, your options are daily or never, so it's kind of like an on-off switch here. Uh, but you can select what time you want to receive that email. So maybe people want to get that uh, email first thing in the morning. Maybe they want to get it at home uh, when they come home from work in the afternoon at 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. Um, totally customizable here in terms of when they'll receive those um, email summaries. And just remember, this is email only on this section here. The next element on here has to do with instant notifications. So um, you remember that we talked a little bit about news items and that the fact that those could be um, you know, major edits or when you post something, um, those would go out as instant notifications. We can also set up instant notifications for discussion boards and for, um, I guess it's just for discussion new, news and Dropbox. So the Dropbox piece is kind of inf interesting because this works as a reminder. So if you've set up an assignment for your students where they have to post an essay or some type of an assignment, let's say today by 1230, then uh, within two days of that due date, they can select whether they want to receive email and or text reminders about those. 
All they have to do is just check the little boxes here. So, you know, I want the email reminder and I want the text reminder. Or, you know, I really only want the text reminder. I don't want the email. So that's really useful um, just as a reminder piece for your students. The other next piece on the list here, it has to do with news items. And again, um, I've set the email and text feature here to be active whenever a news item is updated. Your students have total control over when they want to, um, whether or when they want to activate those pieces as well. And then um, discussions, oh, I'm sorry, there's one for news items updated. There's another one for when the news items become available. So the major edit would be when they're updated, and the second element here, when the news item is available, would be when you actually post a new news item. Sorry if that was confusing. And then we have discussions and events. So, um, or discussions events, excuse me. So whenever a new message is posted to a forum, you know, if students want to be texted or emailed, or I'm sorry, just emailed every time there's a new message posted to a discussion board, they can certainly turn that on. Um, as the instructor, I, I don't think I'd want to get an email every time somebody posted to the discussion board because, you know, with 30 or 45 students in a class, that could, uh, you know, quickly use up your inbox capacity. But it's a nice feature here. This has to work in tandem with subscribing to a discussion board, and I'll show you what that looks like here in just a moment. So um, this is, is a feature... It's kind of been here before, but they're just making it more prominent um, on this notifications page as well. The other thing that will be important for your students, but will probably be really important for you as faculty, is you have the ability to exclude courses from your notifications list. So you can see, for instance, in this student account that I have, because I'm the D2L administrator and I'm in a lot of other courses just for various reasons, um, I have a big long list of courses I'm in and I don't want to receive notifications from every one of those. So what's nice is you have the ability to click this link that says manage my course exclusions. So I'll go ahead and do that now. And then that brings up this list of all of the courses uh, <laughs> that I'm currently enrolled in. Some of them are development courses, some of them are other people's courses, or some of them may be old courses. For instance, you may not want to get updates um, from your first eight-week class if you're moving into the second eight weeks, although really there wouldn't be a lot of updates, but perhaps uh, you leave your course open and somebody goes in and posts something. Um, it's just an option for you. So a little trick that I learned here was actually to, right off the bat, it was easier for me to exclude all courses because then I could go in and turn on the courses I wanted to receive notifications for. If you only have a couple, then you could just turn all of them on by default. Um, but it was easier for me to go through the list and only turn on the ones I wanted than to go through a list of 35 courses and exclude them individually. So I just chose Exclude All Courses. And then I'm going to come down. To the, the course we're in right now is actually this one called My New Course. And I'm going to click this blue arrow to actually turn the notifications for that one back on. And then click Close. So that's what's involved in setting up this um, contact notifications page. And we just click Save at the end of that. Because this is a system-wide setting for your students, they can also get here from the My Home page. So on My Home, you see a list of courses. Um, your students also see their profile. And they can access notifications from here, which is where we just were. So we're going to pop back. Um, from here and we have to go back into the course. So just be aware of that as well. Okay, so here we are. We're back in my new course. We've registered um, our mobile device and our email address. And now I'm going to go back into my student persona or my instructor persona just for one moment. Okay, so here I am again as the instructor. And I'm going to go in and actually update this news item about the workshop attendees. So I'm going to edit the news item. And I'm going to decide that instead of the word banana for today's quiz password, that I want to update that. And today's um, 
password is going to be the word terrier. So I just change, make that edit there. Now you could bold it or something if you wanted to call more attention to it. Um, and I could even put a little note up here that says uh, update today's password has changed. See below. Then what I want to do is click that major edit box and then I'm going to say update. Then when we go back to the course homepage, you can see that that same item is there. It actually hasn't changed the date that it was posted or the time, but it now reflects the new information. And hopefully you're able to see here um, on the screen. Let me wake this up and I'll show you what that news item looks like. working with a new document camera today and so um, I'm slightly technologically challenged because I don't have a real monitor that's showing me what the camera is seeing. So bear with me for just one second. And the big reason I want to show you this is um, so far what I've seen on um, at least on the iPhone and I haven't tested this with a different device is that the text messages that come from D2L appear to be limited to about 120 characters. So um, that's important because you're gonna, as you're going to see here in just a moment, um, the message that comes from D2L says from no reply D2L at losrios.edu. Zoom back in a little bit for you there. Um, and then it says message and then the name of the course, my new course, and then in parentheses, updated news, welcome notification workshop attendees, update, today's password has, and it continues the text message to, to message two of two, changed, see below, this message, dot, 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 and then end. So the moral of the story here is if you're using your news items to send a message to your students that is kind of critical. Um, you're going to want to treat it more like a tweet than a news item. So keep the number of characters short um, and you may tell them I've, your, your news item may be I've posted a new news item for mobile users be sure to come and check the announcements page. You know, something short like that. So just wanted to be make sure you were aware of, of that as an issue. Okay, and then what I want to do now is go back to the student persona once again. So here we are again in as a student. And I want to show you how the discussions piece works. So as a student, I can go to discussions and uh, find a discussion board. And you may or may not have noticed before that in the D2L discussions area, there are these little stars next to the actual discussion forums and topics. So a yellow star means that I have subscribed to that particular discussion board, meaning I'll get email updates whenever a new message is posted there. And you have a few options about how that works as well, and I'll show you in a moment. Um, the, the grayed out stars are obviously ones I have not um, subscribed to. So I'm going to go ahead and subscribe right now to this are, are You Ready for Online Learning discussion board. And All I have to do to subscribe is click the little star here. And it brings up a new um, window here that's going to ask me a few questions. So how do I want to customize these notifications? And the options are about the notification frequency are send me an instant notification, which again, you saw that in the notification screen, that that would have to be turned on there, or include it in my daily summary. So again, if I wanted to receive a daily digest of, you know, there were six new messages posted to the discussion board and here are those messages, that would be a way to do this. I'm going to go ahead and select the instant notification for now. And then also um, there's a link here which allows your students to change their notifications um, preferences. Again, it's that same window we were just in. I'll go ahead and pop that open so you can see it. But again, it takes us right back to that same um, notifications window where we were before. So it's basically you just click the subscribe button. And now I'm subscribed 
to this Are You Ready for Online Learning post. What I'm going to do is actually go back and put my instructor hat on once more. I'm going to post in that forum as, a dis as an instructor uh, just a little message for my students. I'll compose a new message. And I'll say posting to this forum. And when posting to this forum, please be sure to use appropriate netiquette and English language usage. Contact me if you have any questions. Okay. Now what I have to do is just hit post. So it's just like any other discussion post that you or your students may post. I've just posted that to the forum. And now I'm going to go back to my student self again. Refresh the um, discussions page. And now there's a new message here in the Are You Ready for Online Learning piece. Now what I would be able to see here, and let me see if I can pull this up for you as well, is, um, one second, I want to show you the email that I get when that comes in. So that will send an email to my, um, to my email account. Okay, so here's the notification that I just got um, in my inbox which, as my student self. Um, so this is what your students would see. And it says, you know, week one is the forum. Are you ready for online learning? And then here's actually the, the, my name, the date and time of the post that I just put. When posting this forum, please be sure to use appropriate etiquette, et cetera, et cetera. And then it tells the student, you are receiving this notification because you are following updates to the topic. Are you ready for online learning? Um, it tells them, you know, not to reply to the email and how to set their personal preferences um, if they want to change their settings. So again, that's pretty handy. The other thing I think that's handy about these email notifications is if you're already logged into D2L, you can actually click on um, the topic or the forum here. And it actually pops open that screen for you. So again, it takes you right back to where that message was posted from. Um, and I think that's kind of handy for our students. Okay. So I'll go ahead and close that notification. I also wanted to show you what, um, see if I can find it here, what the um, digest looks like. So here's what the, the daily digest would look like. Um, this is an activity summary that came in at 8.04 a.m. this morning. Uh, sorry, that's so small there. Um, but it, that was when I had my notification set for, and it sent me the activity saying, oh, this workshop attendance Dropbox is actually ending in four hours. And I had set the end date and time to be today at 12.30, 12.35 actually, so it's closing right now. Um, so this is an example of what that daily notification would look like for your students when they get that in email. And again, if there had been discussion posts, if there had been other activity in the course, that would show up here as well. So I wanted to show you that. So that's the piece on discussions. And uh, I want to come back here and let's see. Let's also look at the Dropbox. So what I did was um, I set up a Dropbox assignment that is this one right here at the bottom, Workshop Attendance Assignment. Um, it's closing as we speak at 12.35 p.m., which seems to be right now. Um, so that's the one that sent out that notification that I got this morning. I didn't have to do anything special to set that up. Um, simply made a Dropbox, Dropbox folder with a closing day and time and the notifications worked automatically for that based on the students' preferences. So again, you can see the value um, of this tool. And again, it's just a great way to keep students um, in, informed about what's happening when they may not be logged in directly to their class. So with that, um, unless there's something that I inadvertently left out here, 
I'm going to go ahead and um, ask you to post any questions you may have to the Q&A pod and uh, we'll do our best to answer those questions here for you. And so I see a, a question from Deborah Crumpton who's asking how receiving notifications affects a student's data plan. And again, um, the notifications that are sent out to students um, via um, text message would only impact their, their texting plan. So um, whether they have a smartphone or not, most um, phones that are out there now can get text messages. Um, the important piece of this is that it's a, it's a uh, voluntary opt-in for your students. So obviously if they don't want to receive um, text messages because they don't have a texting plan, then they could choose to receive notifications via email or not at all. So hopefully, Deborah, that answers your question. I see another question here. Um, it would be good if we could text from a Google Voice account. And I totally agree with that. Um, I'm hoping that in the next uh, you know, sort of version of D2L that comes out, that they'll have some built-in capability for us to be able to use Google Voice um, so we're not tied to a specific um, data carrier. Um, and I will do some more follow-up to see if there's a workaround um, to allow that to happen. At this point, I'm not aware of one. Um, so Melissa asked a question about managing the exclusions for the course. So let me go back to that notifications um, page again. I'm actually going to go to my home so we can um, take a peek at that. Um, so in terms of the course exclusions, um, because this is a my home level setting, it, it persists across all of your courses. Um, as an instructor or a student, you could go in and, and set this and it will not change. Now as new courses are added, um, so let's say your fall 2012 courses um, get added to D2L, my belief, and I'll have to double check this, is that those would by default be turned on for notifications. However, you would not have to go back and turn off all of the old ones you know, that, that already existed. 